Hi guys, we're back with sessions 35, Diagnostic Test. This is going to be part one of three. Today we're going to discuss hemodynamics and what exactly does it mean, invasive monitoring, indications for PAC, which is a pulmonary artery catheter, and blood gas analysis or interpretation. So let's get started. Now, <clears throat> Let's take a look at this young man. He's healthy. He's running. He has no heart problems. Take a look at the guy underneath. He's screaming, nurse, please help me. Look at what's happening. He's got chest pains that's radiating to the jaw, to the shoulder. So obviously something is wrong with his heart. And here we have a heart, as you can see. The blood vessel is completely occluded, which will inf result in an infarction, what is called myocardial infarction. Layman's terms is usually called a heart attack. Or you might just have a buildup. It does not completely obstruct the vessel, but nevertheless, it makes it difficult for that patient to breathe. So this uh, heart is obviously damaged. Well, if you would like to learn more about chest pain in that particular format, you might just want to try uh, master your clinical skills, chest pain series, master your clinical skills at dearnurses.com. What exactly does hemodynamics mean? Well, what it means is it refers to blood flow, and everyone has blood flow going through their bodies. The problem is your blood flow may be obstructed if you have a damaged heart, and the heart is a pump which normally pumps blood around the body, so any damage you can expect either short pain, shortness of breath, chest pain or drop in blood pressure. And what you would do is what is called an assessment to make sure that patient, the pain is real because not all chest pain may be cardiac only. Now let's talk about a pulmonary artery catheter. This patient is complaining to the doctor he's short of breath. The doctor is saying that he's going to take care of invasive monitoring because his problems are beyond what can just be seen just by evaluating the chest pain and an EKG. Normally when a pulmonary artery catheter is inserted, that patient is going to have a consent signed. And this is a very useful diagnostic tool. This ca uh, catheter, when it's inserted, it's done for things like, it can diagnose things like sepsis, pulmonary hypertension, a myocardial infarction, valvular disease, and many other conditions. Here are the doctors inserting the catheter. Head of bed, the patient's head of bed is down in Trendelenburg and you can see they're working on this patient. Normally what you would expect to find on the monitor, if you've never worked in an ICU, just take a look. There's usually a tracing that comes up in yellow and another one in blue, indicating that it, uh, there is a tracing in the right atrium, the other one into the pulmonary artery. There's also a pressure bag which is connected to the tubing, and that, of course, is done because you don't want backflow of blood. So pay attention to all these things. If you're new to ICU, is there enough fluid in that bag? Is the pressure up the bag? Is the pressure up? Is it down? Is there tracing on the monitor? If you're not familiar, ask someone so they can help you. Also, what would, ex what would we do with a pulmonary artery catheter? The cardiac output is measured. There are many other things that they measure as well as the cardiac output. But you would have to see that while it's being done so you can see the full profile. Take a look at what happens when the catheter is in place. That patient has a line that's inserted. You can see it. There's a nice dressing that's placed, and there is a connection here for what the, uh, is used to do the cardiac output. Make sure your ports are flushed after use. Make, there's usually a chest x-ray also that's done when it's inserted to make sure the catheter is in the correct place. I'm not going to walk you through any more of this. You really have to pay attention when you're in an ICU or CCU to take a look at what goes on. Now here we have an arterial blood gas. What is it exactly? Well, it's a test that's done to evaluate oxygenation of the patient in respiratory distress. Here is a patient who was brought into the emergency room. He's obviously in distress. Uh, he was transported by paramedics and he's in distress, so they are going to do an arterial blood gas on him. Usually they do use the radial artery, but you can use the femoral and the brachial, but typically it's the radial. And uh, what sort of signs and symptoms would you be looking for for respiratory distress? Hypoventilation, which is low oxygenation, mental confusion, low oxy uh, oxygen. The oxygen saturation here is only reading like 85. Notice his blood pressure is also low. 
heart rate is very high, he's tachycardic, he's anxious. And here we have the respiratory therapist with an endotracheal tube, ventilator all ready to connect to this patient because he's obviously in respiratory distress. Now let's take a look at when the blood gas is done, what can we learn from it? Well here we have the normal parameters for blood gas and you just take a look. P, we have the pH, what's normal, the PO2, 80 to 100, the pH is 70.35, 7.45. We also have what is called PCO2, which is the uh, carbon dioxide, and the HCO3, which is the bicarb, and the BE, the base excess. I'm going to run you through this very quickly. Um, any problem associated with the pH will mean that this patient is either the problems are either respiratory or metabolic. And if there is compensation, the pH will be normal, and if there isn't, it will be abnormal, uncompensated. Now, if the PO2 or PCO2, there are any alterations, that indicates the problem is respiratory. If the bicarb is affected, then it's metabolic also. You can have problems associated with both metabolic and respiratory. You can have both or you can have either or respiratory or metabolic. What would cause respiratory problems? Well, uh, if it's respiratory, things like uh, you would have hypoventilation, it could be cardiac, it could be pulmonary central nervous system depression. You can have metabolic also like diabetic ketoacidosis, renal or liver failure. Respiratory alkalosis could be caused by hyperventilation. You probably heard of that making a patient breathe in a brown bag to slow them down, just as simple as anxiety might cause it. High fever, trauma, and of course we never take take it upon ourselves to do an arterial blood gas unless the doctor orders it. And all changes should be done as the doctor orders it. Jim wound up on a ventilator because he was having difficulty breathing. He was hypoxemic, low oxygenation, so he needed a ventilator to assist his breathing. I also want to draw to you, this to your attention that metabolic alkalosis might be caused by things by excessive vomiting, gastric suctioning. You know when we have a patient with gastric suctioning connection, connected, if that patient has too much sucked out of the stomach, yes, it can lead to a metabolic alkalosis and things like hypokalemia. Well, I hope you've managed to learn something from this and take the time when you're in the ICU to see if you can find a patient who's on a ventilator, arterial blood gas is drawn, what you can learn from it. Have a great weekend and stay posted for more clinical issues.